Hi, my name is Heather Richmond. Welcome to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. And as always, thank you to those of you who have taken the time to share my work, reach out, make comments, ask questions. Those things are always appreciated. So this is somewhere in the neighborhood of my 20th episode of Voices in Ascension. I still need to get around to numbering those. <laughs> um, and it's been a little while since I've, I've done one of these interviews, but I'm really glad to be able to have an opportunity to pick that back up. And so I am here today with my friend Alex. And Alex is based in Colorado. And currently, although, you know, as with all of us, things are shifting and, you know, she's just sort of following her guidance, but currently she uh, identifies as an embodiment coach and I can attest to her wonderful expertise. I myself have taken a movement class with her um, a couple of months back and uh, that's something I never would have done ordinarily. So she was very uh, instrumental in kind of helping me move out of my comfort zone. So um, I'm going to let Alex kind of introduce herself and just tell us, Alex, like what it is that you do and, you know, a little bit about yourself, just whatever you feel called to share. Thanks, Heather. Super excited to be here. Um, yeah, so I'm based in Boulder, Colorado, and um it was always the first thing I mentioned is that I have a really sweet dog named Poppy and <laughs> she, <laughs> she keeps me in check as far as lessons and patience and perseverance goes. Um, I that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I right now I'm calling myself an embodiment coach. And what that really means for me is helping guide people into deeper connection with their being and their own internal healers. I am a huge proponent and believer in the fact that we all have the power to heal ourselves, mm -hmm. And that power comes from the power of our presence mm -hmm. and our ability to track our internal sensations and use them for growth. And so while my, my proper business is still young and a little startup, um, I feel my whole life has been an, a work of embodiment practice leading me yeah. into being able to guide people into deeper connection. So yeah, that's just like scratching the surface of what I feel an embodiment coach is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. That's a, that's very well said. Beautiful. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting to me, uh, you know, we all go through phases in this journey mm -hmm. and for the longest time I was sort of in the camp of, um, you know, all is mind and really what happens with the body is just, you know, fleeting and temporary and illusionary anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But then you kind of come to a point where you do realize that, oh, okay, it does, you know, it does matter. All is mind, but if we are having this physical experience, we have to learn how to embody it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I know for me personally, I've just sort of kind of, you know, shifted. I think you have to kind of come out of the body and understand what that means. And then when you, you know, arrive at a better understanding, you can then kind of come back down into the body and bring that higher knowledge with you. So I, I know you're going to help a lot of people who are in similar places like that. Yeah, totally. And I think like so many spiritual traditions do speak of, you know, uh, coming out of the body, you know, fasting and, and really like going up, right? Like that energy of, of leaving the body. And then I, but I, I totally agree with you that I think it's so important that we then come back and integrate that wisdom, that information back into our beings so that we're not just talking about and, and dreaming about that, which we want to achieve or who we want to be. But when we actually bring the body online with the wisdom of our higher self, that's when like 
real big palpable changes in our reality occur because we're actually stepping and walking in the essence of what we've been working to be, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I I think you just described what heaven on earth really means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your, you know, sort of personal journey. Um, I know this question is always a little bit tricky for everyone to (laughs) kind of identify a beginning quote unquote. Um, But if you had to kind of, you know, pin down something, how long have you been more actively or consciously spiritually seeking? Yeah, totally. So I would say like, so like I mentioned earlier, I think I've, I've actually always been a seeker ever since I was a little child, you know, from reflections from other people, but also just in my own feeling, I would receive a lot of comments like, wow, you're really old soul, or you just have that, you know, that way about you that feels older than you are. And I think also some of that was coming from my, the growth that I was going to go through in my life and the trauma that I went through as a child. Um, I had a parent who was quite verbally abusive to me around my body and the way that I was, the way that I looked um, and the way that I acted. And um, I was really big into theater and circus because I felt like when I went on stage, I got to fully express myself. I got to be the fullest version of myself and I didn't have to hold back and make myself physically and emotionally smaller to make everyone else comfortable. And, um, so along my path, you know, high school and out of high school, I actually, right after I graduated, moved to Boulder and lived in Colorado for about three years. And it was in that time that I would say was when I started, um, when I really lost my way and then realized that I wanted to find my way back. Um, so when I was about 19, um, I began uh, having an eating disorder. Um, and I was bulimic for about two years. Um, Mm. a year of that was really me, maybe even six months, even of me just being in it and thinking that I had control. Um, and again, I think my eating disorder came from a place of me wanting to control the way that I looked and the way that people perceived me and trying to make myself literally smaller so that I would be accepted. And um, so really about six months into my eating disorder, I was like, okay, maybe I'll stop. And then that's when I uh, really realized the hole that I had dug myself in. And um, the next few years were a process of me recovering. And a huge part of that recovery was learning to be present with the sensations in my body, learning to sit with and not just react. Um, and also, you know, gaining deeper spiritual connection. Um, if anyone listening has struggled with eating disorders before you would know firsthand that when your body is lacking vital nutrients, the first thing to go is actually your brain because your body starts just sending everything it has to your heart, to your lungs, just trying to keep you alive. And so I actually really felt like I was, was actually literally losing my mind. I couldn't remember things. And I just had this fog, this haze, and I felt so disconnected from everything. Mm -hmm. And it was, when I started recovering, I started realizing that I, I wanted to be in touch. I wanted to know what my body was trying to tell me. And, um, you know, I've always been a mover. And so that was the mode that I went into for my recovery of, I just started moving and I started learning from my body what she needed and what she was asking for. So I hope that answers your question. I think it yeah, does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I certainly did not know um, that story of, you know, mm-hmm. the, your experiences with that. And I think that's such a powerful story for you to be able to share 
in you know what you're doing now with your future students or clients or whomever um, wow yeah that's beautiful and it's also interesting to me that you you mentioned um, about being an old soul because right as you started answering the question I found myself I was like you know I don't know how old Alex is actually <laughs> how old are you just out of curiosity I'm 25 25 okay <laughs> yeah you do absolutely have a, a the presence of someone much more you know mature and and wiser so yeah that that makes a lot of sense for sure <laughs> um so I guess you would say that if you kind of had to you know think about a, a trigger per se for your awakening or let's let's take it in this direction I guess because you kind of covered that but if you had to identify a, a trigger or an inspiration for kind of what what sparked the idea in you like okay I can turn my experiences that have been not so great into an opportunity to help other people Mm, I think it happened last summer when I um, moved back home to New Hampshire, where my family's from. So COVID hit and I was uh, living out in Washington state and um, decided to move home. And at that point, you know, I had recovered from my eating disorder, but was still trying to find my way along the path and was still feeling confused and unsure about what it was that my gift was. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was home in New Hampshire, there was this really deep reconnecting with my roots, with my family, with the place that I grew up, and then also with the just the roots of me, of my being. Mm -hmm. And it really was just like I, I can remember a few a few practices that I had where I just came out like, whoa, <laughs> what just happened? like it felt so epic the way I was moving and the way I was the sensation that was coming through my being I actually it's like I had been numb for so long and and I had been building my awareness and then last summer I just I felt the floodgates open and there was this moment of realizing what a gift mm -hmm. um it is that I have the ability to guide myself through this. And I just, I knew that I wanted to share that with people because the, the alchemization that movement allows in our beings is deeply profound, more profound than I could even, than I could even attempt to put into words because it's not words, it's movement, it's feeling, it's yeah. the body. So yeah, I would say last summer was when I really became clear that this was something that I felt passionate about sharing with others. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And you know, I, I think that it, you hit on something pretty important there too. Like it is, it is often very challenging to to articulate these experiences that we're having um, in consciousness um, into human words, you know, because there is no, it's, it's a, it's not a, a human experience or a solely human experience. And so I'm sure that for, you know, particularly people that have more experience with, you know, things like um, dance and acting and things of that nature, I'm sure that it is, much more fulfilling, I guess, to express those things through movement or through, you know, whatever your, your art form is. And so I, I can absolutely see the value in that. And so since you've kind of made that decision, I know you said you were um, living at home, but now you're in Colorado. So, you know, in addition to like that moving, um, what else, you know, in your life has, has changed since you, you know, really made that commitment to yourself and to, to help others? Oof, yeah, <laughs> so much. <laughs> I was just reflecting with a friend today of the, when we choose ourselves, when we opt in to following mm -hmm. our heart is like these huge shifts occur. And so I, um, 
I met this woman online who was a ceremonial tea teacher and um, she, we hit it off and she was actually the reason I moved out to Colorado. She was like, Alex, I'm here. Just come stay at my house. We'll figure everything out. Oh. And um, so the physical move for sure was like this solidifying in me trusting in my, in my guidance oh. and really just listening to it, even though I had really really no concrete idea why I was coming back to Colorado, but I think I knew that energetically there was a full circle to be completed here because the last time I lived here, I was uh, quite ill and um, left Colorado to go home to the respite of my family to try and recover. And so since being back here, I've felt there's definitely been some really big cycles of completion around my eating disorder. And I, you know, while I can confidently say I am recovered, I, and truly now I feel the cycle has completed. But when I came back here, there was definitely a time of like having to revisit and reckon with the energy that I had created in, in living here. Um, and Boulder is a pretty small town. So, you know, I'm seeing the places I used to live and the places I used to go and um, remembering where I was at. Um, and I think the other really big thing that I felt change and shift is my capacity to engage with community. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, as a young person, I was either pretty explosive or pretty, or making myself quite small. And through this practice, it's as if I've learned the language of my body. I actually like to think of it as like, we have the language language of our mind and the language of our body. And it's as if we've grown up speaking English our whole life. And then we go to Turkey and, you know, we don't know <laughs> Turkey at all. Right. And so through the process of my movement, it's, I'm, I'm learning the language of my body and learning how to translate that into awareness in my mind and then reintegrate it into my body. So it's kind of this undulation of, of center. That's what I feel is like a really strong center. And in that my capacity to be in sisterhood, to hold space in tough situations, to keep my heart open when every instinct in my body is telling me to go back to the old pattern of closure and cutting people off. So there's just been so much more space for growth in my life, I feel, because I'm aware of what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, that's, we're always called to, you know, it, revisit, like you mentioned, revisit these same le learning opportunities, <laughs> I'll put it that way, mm -hmm. at higher and higher levels. And it's it's amazing how, you know, um, even if you think that you're done with a lesson, it may present itself in like a different form, you know, and it, it sounds like you're, you're facing that head on and, and very well aware of that. Um, and I, gosh, you, you, I have, Colorado has come into my awareness so much recently, and I've never been there. I want to go so badly. I, I, I think it just must be this just magical place to, <laughs> to live in um, from what everyone describes. So it sounds like you're in a, a great space for, you know, your own journey and, and also finding like-minded others within that, you know, that community that you mentioned. So that's beautiful. And so what about, um, you know, others in your life? I know you mentioned that you had kind of a difficult relationship with your mother when you were younger and um you know just various people in your in your reality your family your friends since that you know kind of year ago mark since you've made you know continued healing and making these changes how have others responded to that generally 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. And just to clarify too, cause I, I love my mom so deeply. Sure, the parent sure. I was referring to was actually my father. So I just oh, want sorry. To- sorry. <laughs> I don't know where I got mother. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, and I didn't specify. So that's all good. If you're listening, mom, it wasn't you. Right? <laughs> sorry, Alex's mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I, I think that, but of course we all have um, lessons to learn with our parents and our parents are yeah. just humans on their own path doing the best they can. So yeah. I think um, going home last summer was a moment for my mom and I to heal some of our own stuff though, for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, the word that just keeps coming to me is, is space. Um, and all last year, that was the word that was coming through as I was looking for my home and on the move. And so physical space, but also creating internal space. And so I feel the people in my life have responded to me in the same way that I feel myself shifting. And so as I've as I've been able to soften and open my heart to those around me, it creates space for them to do the same. And, you know, to use my mom as an example, she was both parents as, you know, a mom and a dad growing up and a business owner (laughs) and a friend, you know, she did it all. And so (laughs) she is so go, 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 go. And, um, sometimes I think she forgets the softness of her own heart. And so I think by me learning the softness of mine while I was back in New Hampshire was important for her to see Mm -hmm. and to be reflected that we can be successful, we can make things happen, and we can still be connected to our soft feminine hearts. Um, Mm you know, whether we're male or female, we can be connected to our feminine and our masculine. Um, Yeah. So yeah, I would say, and then in reflected in my other relationships, there's the word that's coming through is also just grace, space Mm -hmm. and grace. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't had anyone, you know, like really outwardly reject what I'm doing, but I've definitely had friends who, um, it's not maybe that they don't believe in me, but they're like, oh, you just quit your job and you're going to just try and have your own business. You know, there's some of my friends that are maybe still a little more in that 3D mindset of like, but you have to have a job and make money to survive. Right. And so that to me has come up as a reflection of my own limiting beliefs mm-hmm. around finances mm-hmm. and and what is actually possible for abundance. Um And, and again, that word of space of just being able to hold their, what they're, you know, reflecting to me and say, great, that is your story. I hear you. And let me check in with my being to see if that is true for me. Mm, Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, it, (laughs) uh, similar to, to what we were speaking about a minute ago, I think it's, I know in my own experience, it's been so interesting to hear people um, on occasion, and I've had similar experiences, like I, for the most part, everyone has reacted very positively and has been helpful and supportive, but occasionally, you know, you'll hear, um, especially in the beginning, like after I quit my own job and that sort of thing, like that, that sort of feedback, and you real, you come to a place where you realize, oh, they're just expressing my own internal doubt, you know, <laughs> so, so you use that as like, okay, I'll just bring that to awareness, and, and let that go, and so, yeah, it sounds like you've, you've really um, developed a, a healthy perspective on that, and it's, it's mm-hmm. very nice that you have the, the relationship with your, with your mother, and, um, you know, the support from her, I'm sure that that's very, you know, helpful in many ways. So, um, all right, so switching gears just a little bit, um, on your own journey, um, if you still do, you know, kind of consult, quote unquote, outside sources, um, or if you did in the past, like, who have been some spiritual teachers or just general, you know, creators that have helped you in your evolution? 
Yeah, it's such a great question. And it's something that has actually been coming up for me a lot because one of the teachers who I've really dived into his work this last year is David Data. And um, I shared that David Data was someone who I was reading and diving into with a friend. And the reflection I received back from her was not at all what I expected. Mm -hmm. And so I've been contemplating a lot and actually just entering energetically calling in teachers who are women, I, I've realized that a lot of the books that I've read or um, sources that I go to are actually men. And it's something that I'm wanting to rewrite a little bit. I feel that the feminine awakening and empowerment isn't, isn't necessarily going to be told from the perspective of a man. <laughs> Um, and so while the work of David Data has been really integral in my, in my path of opening and softening, it still feels, it feels incomplete in a lot of ways. And, um, yeah, I'm at a place right now where I'm allowing the intention to just be out there for, uh, an amazing, powerful woman teacher to come into my life. And I think the other biggest teacher truly in my life, and she is a woman, is my dog, Poppy. Mm -hmm. um, through training this animal that I have, um, even looking back uh, six months ago, she was so fear-based and so alert and I actually didn't even feel safe around her and um over the last six months I've been extremely committed to training her and now she is she's opening up she is softening into the sweet secure girl that she always has been oh. but there are just there are so many walls that we had to break through yeah. and so she has been a really profound teacher for me in um you know there's so many lessons there but yeah just the <laughs> the the patience and the ability to continue to believe in some in something that I can't really directly communicate with in the human way that we want to. Mm -hmm. And again, it's like creating that space for us to learn how to communicate with each other in a way that feels safe and good um, has been huge. Uh, such a big, big teacher. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. I, I always say that, that dogs are real, I mean, animals in general, but in my own personal experience, dogs are just the best teachers. They really are. <laughs> they are, totally. they're so great. Um, and, you know, who knows, maybe down the road with your experience and training her, maybe that, you know, might be something you'll, you'll feel called to do in terms of helping other animals or helping, you know, their owners with training and things things of that nature so that's really cool all right so as we this is sort of a broad question um but you know as we look at things that have transpired in the quote-unquote 3d collective um, my guess is that much like me you're probably um you know fairly you're more of an observer of what's going on. You know, you don't really feel like a, a particular connection. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, um, but I do think that when viewed from a higher perspective, these things like the virus and, and the, you know, the shortages that we're seeing now and various things. And, and honestly, I don't even know what else is going on because I don't follow the news at all, but, you know, things of that nature, um, are reflective of our own internal journey, right? And so um, do you have anything, any kind of perspective that you might wanna share on, you know, kind of what's unfolding collectively that we're observing? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the other spiritual teachers who I really enjoy, his name's Phil Good. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. He said something the other day that I feel like opens up how I feel about this whole situation quite beautifully. He said something to the effect of 
until you choose yourself, you're not the one choosing. And I don't think I'm saying that exactly as he did, Mm -hmm. but what I feel is we've been given this opportunity right now in really like, uh, like you said, quote unquote, kind of 3D way of like, we have the opportunity to either choose ourselves right now or choose to stay in the story in the more unconscious. And it's becoming quite clear for a lot of people, I think. And I do believe that there is this big awakening happening right now. And it's humans reconnecting with our dharma. And the dharma of humans is to protect this planet and to be stewards of the land here and we have we've simply forgotten and so um what I see right now is people remembering and then um having a moment of being like of fear of being like whoa what have we done right and going through Mm -hmm. the emotions of grief and rage and maybe some blame and then eventually we come to realize that it all starts with us that it all comes back to our presence in this moment and while the trials and um, the energies of the collective are vastly complicated and interwoven and there's so many threads of places that we need help and to fix you know especially with global warming and our planet potentially not even being inhabitable in 50 years um i think it it actually is really quite simple when we stop and reflect and like you said observe from a higher place um i think it comes back to the lesson of remembering that we are a soul having a human experience here to learn how to deepen into our service and into our love. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think you put that so well. Um, We have an opportunity to continue to stay in the story that someone else is writing Mm -hmm. and be swayed and, you know, uh, ride the roller coaster of that, or we can choose to, you know, rise above that and and write our own story. So yeah, absolutely. All right. And so lastly, if, you know, someone, whether it's your client or or whomever, just someone listening um, in general to this, you know, what advice, if you could kind of narrow it down to one piece of advice that you would give someone who is just waking up somebody who's just sort of like you know they've like you mentioned um they're looking around at these collective events and they're like hmm wait a minute (laughs) there's there must be more to this story so uh what what one piece of advice would you give someone asking those beginning to ask those questions i guess as you're speaking just what is coming up for me is my awareness of my breath at this moment and throughout our whole conversation Mm -hmm. and more and more just throughout my day. And I think that breath is obviously so integral to life, to our, our life force, to being alive. And it's not something that we typically think about. And I think in my awakening process, learning how to remember my breath was the first step in remembering my divinity, my innate connection with all and my, uh, like the, the unshakable truth that we are being breathed alive by the universe. Mm. And so for someone who is feeling like maybe it's too hard or complicated to connect or yeah there's so much going on it's overwhelming we can always always come back to our breath to be reminded of the simplicity of our presence and the the innate truth that we are we are souls here to love yeah yeah 
gosh, absolutely. I, I could not agree with that more. Um, I've just recently over the past couple of months, I began taking a, a breathwork class, which is not oh, something yeah. I would, I would typically do, but, um, I have seen people who are in the beginning stages of this journey. Like you can just kind of tell, right. You know, and, uh, they have accelerated so rapidly by integrating those breathwork practices. And you're right. I mean, it's, it's such a basic fundamental thing that we often don't pay much attention to until, you know, we, we become more aware. So yeah, I 100% I agree with that, that advice for sure. So Okay, well, um, anything else coming up for you that you feel called to share or? I mean, I think we could probably talk for hours, but <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate you having me on and taking the time to speak. And it feels like a really beautiful opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And thank you so much for your, your time as well. I know that your words will reach who they need to reach and provide inspiration for sure. So I will um, link Alex's information in the description box. Um, she told me that Instagram is where she's, you know, primarily active, but she does have a website as well. So I will um, put that information and for, you know, anyone who feels called to, and I presume whether you're in Boulder or anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. you, you do yeah, I work online. Work Okay. Okay. So if you feel called to reach out to her, definitely, definitely do that. And so thank you again, Alex, for, for taking the time to talk with me today. And thank you all for listening.